Hey everybody, it's John Thomas and welcome back to my channel. As you saw from the title, today I'm attempting something that I am a little bit hesitant to do, a little bit afraid to do, but I'm also very excited to do, and that is go fishing on the river. This is something that is completely outside of my comfort zone. In fact, I'm getting a little a bit of a nauseous feeling just thinking about it. One, I don't like fishing. I'm not a very patient person. So to go sit there and potentially do nothing for a few hours sounds a little relaxing, but at the same time, I, I just, I think I'll be bored. Number two, I've never seen a foreigner fishing on the river. I don't know how I'm gonna be accepted when I go out there. And then the third hesitation is, I don't wanna catch anything. I truly don't want to catch anything. I, I don't want to eat the fish. I'm not gonna take the fish home. I mean, maybe I could give it to somebody who's also at the river and I can always throw it back in. I'm very nervous, so let me show you where I started. Initially, I went to Walmart to see if they had any fishing rods and they did not have anything fishing related. What they did have though, was my little chair. This little chair is what I will sit on next to the river while I fish. Everybody has some type of little stool that they use. And so, this one is mine. I got it in blue and white polka dot, because why not? So, I have my stool to sit on, and then, while I was in Walmart, I quickly went on Jingdong, which is kind of like the Amazon, one of the Amazons of China, and ordered a fishing set. And I will put that fishing set right up here. It was only 65 RMB, which is like nine, roughly eight and a half, nine dollars US, which is a great deal. And I am so shocked, it got here in less than 24 hours. So here's what I got. I got the actual fishing line and the rod and it has taken me probably an hour to feed the line so I did that ahead of time but uh, I, you string it through and then this expands out uh oh oh well I'll have to refeed that and so I'll be able to use this. Now this feels really good quality. I'm shocked at how well it spins and uh, I I'm excited to see what it actually does when we go outside today. Also in that package was so many different types of lures. Wow. And hooks. Wow. The one thing I didn't have was bait and it came with bait. Like these little capsules. So, I remember as a kid, we would go fishing and we would have worms or the little, almost like garlic smelling marshmallows that we would put on the hooks. I've never seen these individually wrapped little things in what looks to be rubber bands, but we'll give it a shot. I'm very nervous, but I am gonna take my supplies and I'm gonna head down to the river. What I'm gonna do is kind of a three-stage approach. I'm gonna try to attempt fishing very much by myself, not near a lot of people. So my hope is that I can practice using the rod and not feel too embarrassed. In the second stage, I'm gonna move closer to people and just kind of see what the engagement and interaction looks like and then I'm gonna move in the third stage maybe to where there's a lot of people and see if I can uh, catch anything. That is my plan. I don't know if everything today is gonna go as planned, but that is the plan. So, let's get going. Let me change into my outfit. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, I got my hook and tackle. UV protection shirt on, I've got my fisherman cap, and I am ready 
to go fishing. It's gonna look weird with my mask on and stuff, but we'll see. All right, let's get going. All right, so I'm down on the river trying to find the best location. I'm very covered up. Everybody seems to be sitting on their coolers though. Take a look. All right, so I'm headed to where I think there's a quiet spot that I can practice my casting because I haven't done it in forever. I don't even know if I've hooked it up right. I've realized before even starting, I have two mistakes. One, I didn't bring any gloves. In case I do catch something, I'm gonna actually have to touch it with my hands. And two, I didn't bring a net. So that'll be a little bit more challenging in case I do catch anything. Maybe this is foreshadowing for the fact that I will not catch anything. I wanna find a space without all of the kelp and stuff. Take a look. See it all? Oh, there's a dead fish. See it all? Oh, there's a dead fish. But the line won't do well in here. Alright, I think I made it to my quiet spot that I'm gonna try to do this at. I'm gonna head over to a corner. I think I've made it to where I wanna hang out. Each one of these has a little rubber band on it, so I'm thinking that that's what goes around the hook because these are quite uh, hard, very difficult to pierce with the actual hook itself. So I'm going to try to do it with just the rubber band. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Didn't go anywhere at all. I got my first line in the water. What? So my line is doing exactly what I thought it was gonna do. It keeps grabbing all of the seaweed, like a lot of it. No. This is not good. It's like dragging, oh, got it. Well, I caught my first thing. Do you see it? All the seaweed. <laughs> All right, I've lost almost all of the food, so let me put some more on here. All right, I casted it again, right into a big pile of seaweed. This is not working out well. Ah! So far a failure. Maybe that's why nobody's fishing here. All right, I feel like I've learned a little bit about how to cast this. And so I'm gonna try to go to stage two, which is go to where there's a couple more people. Let's go! I'm walking, trying to find a place for stage two, and I'm noticing that nobody has a pole with a reel on it. Everybody's poles are just the line and a pole and they're purposely fishing within the seaweed so they just kind of the pole is so long they just kind of drop the line where that is so very different than what I'm attempting to do today so I'm, I'm assuming that nobody's attempting to do what I'm doing because it it does exactly what I had done pick up seaweed the entire time
just walked past that swimming club, so they are already getting back into the water. I can't even believe it. One, because I'm looking at this water and it just looks so gross. But two, it's gotta be freezing. But every spring and summer, it's in the water. I feel like at some point I should probably try that, just to say that I did it and swam in the river. Like I walked across the ice when it's frozen and then to say that I swam in it in the summer, but I'm pretty sure I'd end up with some kind of bacterial infection and I don't want that. <laughs> But I'm striking out here. I cannot find a great place to kind of pop down with. There's not a lot of seaweed. And then to know that I have the wrong equipment is also kind of a bummer. All right, I'm gonna try a little bit longer and then I may have to call it a day. All right, I'm in spot number two, which is right across from where I went the other night for my little night video on Tinjin. Uh, I'm by myself though, but there's no seaweed. It's much more breezy here, so I'm sure you can't hear me. My hat's already flown off like five times. faces as they walk past me because I'm not looking on purpose but I now I have a neighbor somebody else has joined me Call this a day. That was so cool. I was just leaving, and the guy that was talking to me, which I don't think my camera was on at the time, told me that he saw some big fish, told me that I came at the wrong time, and that I should come at either 6 a.m., 7 a.m., or 8 a.m., uh, the morning or at night. But the afternoon is not the best time to do that. Or the afternoon is not the best time to do this. So I may have to make another attempt next weekend in the morning we'll see let me know if you want to make if you want me to make an attempt pop down in the comments below and see you know i know fishing videos aren't the most exciting thing to watch but it is interesting when uh it's in an environment that you're completely unfamiliar with all right i'll see you guys back in the apartment okay i'm back in the apartment and wow what an adventure that was 
I know it just felt like you were just sitting there watching me do nothing, and that's pretty much what you were doing. But I'm gonna call today a huge success. Not because I caught anything, because I didn't, but because I actually pushed myself and pushed the limits of what I thought that I would be able to do and actually go out there and take a risk and fish with the locals and uh, have a good time. Now I know in most of the spots I was by myself, uh, that had to do solely with the equipment that I brought. I think if I was to do this again, I would have the pole without the reel and try to get more connected. But to fish where the others were fishing would have just been completely pointless because my hooks would have just got onto the seaweed and it would have been over. So I do feel good about where I was and I did interact with some people, not all of which I got on camera because my camera would die after 10 minutes. So I wasn't able to capture all of the conversations, but it was great just to connect with people. I thought that was also a win. So I will do this again. I am convinced that that was very relaxing for me and pushed me out of my comfort zone. And so I'm going to do that again for sure. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining my Exploring Tingen series here on my channel. And I hope you enjoyed today's version of the series on the river. All right. If you're enjoying watching these Explore Tingen series and you've been watching my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. We would love to have you here and I would appreciate uh, you. If you don't, that's totally okay too. Uh, but if you do, it would really help me out. So thanks for subscribing. And, uh, and if you're interested, click the video below. In that video, I talk about what it's like to be a tourist here in Tingen, and I take you to a couple of the tourist destinations here. Other than that, you guys have a great rest of your day, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.